A lump of melted nuclear fuel, so deadly it could kill you in minutes, still sits beneath Chernobyl. In Japan, cameras captured the exact moment one of Fukushima's reactors exploded after a tsunami knocked out its cooling systems, triggering one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. And in Washington, workers spent years vacuuming radioactive sludge out of a leaking pool just steps from the Columbia River. This is real footage from the world's most radioactive nuclear sites. This right here is what's known as one of the most radioactive areas of Chernobyl. That's saying a lot. After the explosion in 1986, a lot of the melted core material ended up pooling underneath the plant. One of the most dangerous things left behind is what's now known as the elephant's foot. This giant solid mass of radioactive goo made up of melted nuclear fuel, metal, sand, and concrete. It got the name because of the way it looks. Like a huge wrinkled lump, it kind of looks like elephant skin. At the time it formed, it was extremely radioactive. Just standing near it for a few minutes back then would have killed you. Photos were taken by bouncing cameras off mirrors so that no one had to get too close. The surface was so hot that it was physically burning through the floors. And these days it's cooled down a lot and it's not instantly lethal anymore, but it's still dangerously radioactive and it's locked away deep inside the ruins of the plant. This is footage of one of the reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant exploding. So on March 11th, 2011, there was a massive 9.0 earthquake off the coast of Japan. This caused a giant tsunami which hit the power plant. The plant was designed to shut down automatically during emergencies like earthquakes, but the tsunami flooded the backup generators, which were supposed to keep the reactors cool. And with no power, the cooling system failed. And over the next few hours, the reactors started to overheat. The pressure built up, and three of the reactors went into full meltdown. Hydrogen gas built up inside the reactors, and eventually it exploded, sending radioactive material into the air. The fallout spread to nearby towns, and thousands had to evacuate. The ocean got contaminated as well. And on top of that, there were more nuclear emergencies, including a radioactive leak into a wastewater storage pool. Cleanup is still happening. It could take more than 40 years to fully decommission the plant. While the reactors have been shut down, the area around Fukushima is still heavily contaminated. Large parts are still off limits. This is footage of workers cleaning up radioactive sludge from the K East Basin. The K East Basin was a large pool at the Hanford site in Washington, D.C. It stored used nuclear fuel from a reactor called the N Reactor. It was built in the 50s, close to the Columbia River, which made it risky if anything leaked. Well, over time, the fuel started to break down, creating a thick, radioactive sludge at the bottom of the pool. The basin became heavily contaminated contaminated and it was getting concerning, so the U.S. Department of Energy decided that it needed to be cleaned up. Workers removed the fuel and sludge over the course of years. Once the cleanup was done, they drained the water and filled the basin with grout to prevent anything left inside from spreading. These workers were vacuuming about 55 cubic yards of radioactive ooze. They stood on grates suspended above the 20 foot deep basin and used vacuuming equipment at the end of long poles. You'll notice there are also shots from the underwater cameras that they used to help guide their work. This is drone footage of Pripyat, a place that's been frozen in time ever since the Chernobyl disaster in 86. This town, once home to workers at the nuclear plant, was evacuated within 36 hours of the meltdown and people left everything behind. The streets are now empty, the buildings are decaying, and nature is slowly covering the area. As you can see, this footage is kind of eerie. The abandoned buildings, the rusted playgrounds, the iconic Ferris wheel. It looks like a set from The Walking Dead. As cold and quiet as the place is though, radiation is still very much a problem here and most of the town is off limits. What you're looking at here is just one of the many many nuclear explosions at a test site called Semipalatinsk in what is now Kazakhstan. The Semipalatinsk test site was one of the most active places for nuclear weapons testing during the Cold War. Between 1949 and 1989, the Soviet Union conducted over 450 nuclear tests here. This made it one of the most radioactive places in the world. The tests were kept secret from the public for years, but the long-term effects are still being felt to this day. People living nearby have suffered from higher rates of cancer and more birth defects, and the environment's been permanently damaged. 
The site was abandoned after the Soviet Union fell, but to this day, radiation levels are still very dangerous in some parts. Now we have this gray mound of rock near Weldon Spring, Missouri. It doesn't look all that interesting, but the backstory is pretty nuts. During World War II, the site was used to produce explosives. Then in the 50s and 60s, uranium was enriched for nuclear weapons at the facility. The problem was, when the operation shut down in the late 60s, they didn't really clean up. There were piles of uranium and radium, TNT, and asbestos left behind. It was just this giant toxic mess. If someone were to fall into it, they'd end up like that dude in Robocop. So to deal with it, the government decided to cover it all up. Not in a conspiratorial sense, I mean literally just cover it up. They built a giant hill to seal in all the radioactive waste and chemical debris. This mound is now called the Weldon Springs Site Remedial Action Project Disposal Cell. But locals have just nicknamed it the Nuclear Waste Adventure Trail. Today, people can visit the site, climb to the top of the mound, and get a view of the surrounding area. There's really not much to see other than grass out in the distance, but I guess it's cool to stand on. The hill is used by bird watchers as well and amateur astronomers who just like looking at the clear skies at night. I can't say that this would be my go-to spot on like a pleasant nature walk. I, I get that it's supposedly totally safe now, but I don't know, I still wouldn't want to spend too much time in a place like this. According to one former security guard though, they spent years working at the site without any major health problems. Still, it's a pretty weird spot for a tourist attraction. This is archival footage of a nuclear test being carried out at a site called Maralinga in Australia. The British government carried out a series of nuclear tests here between 1956 and 1963. Seven nuclear explosives were detonated above ground, along with over 600 minor trials. These minor tests were anything but harmless though. They involved experiments with plutonium, uranium, and other toxic stuff that spread contamination across the area. The fallout impacted not just the test site, but also nearby Aboriginal communities, many of whom were never properly warned or relocated. And the cleanup, which didn't start until decades later, has been heavily criticized. At one point, workers just bulldozed contaminated soil into pits and buried it. Some plutonium contaminated areas were only partially cleaned and still are a risk today. Even after remediation, scientists have found radioactive particles spread far beyond the core test zones. Marlinga is technically open to visitors now and some tours are available, but uh, access is limited, which is not a good thing. Long-term effects of the testing on the indigenous people here is still not addressed all that well, and the full health impact still isn't fully known. So it's isolated, but it's one of the most contaminated places in the Southern Hemisphere. This is footage taken in what's called a radon health mine. So this is a place where people pay to inhale radioactive gas for health reasons. The one you're looking at here happens to be in Germany, but Montana is really the place to go if you wanna try this out for yourself, which I wouldn't do, but some swear by it. So in Montana, there are a handful of abandoned uranium mines that have been repurposed into these radon health mines. These mines naturally emit radon gas, which is radioactive and is said to increase your risk of cancer. But for decades, some people have believed that short-term exposure can actually help with conditions like arthritis, asthma, and just chronic pain. So instead of avoiding it, visitors pay to spend hours underground sitting in folding chairs just breathing it in. It's not backed by any major medical organizations and the long-term effects here are questionable at best. Radon is a known carcinogen, and the Environmental Protection Agency lists it as the second leading cause of lung cancer in the US. Gotta say, this has to be one of the strangest uses of a radioactive site. This was the Baker event, nuclear test conducted at Bikini Atoll on July 25th of 1946. Bikini Atoll, part of the Marshall Islands in the Pacific, was used by the United States as a nuclear testing site after World War II. Between 1946 and 1958, the US detonated 23 nuclear weapons here, including some of the most powerful ever tested. The most infamous was Castle Bravo, 
1954, which ended up being more than twice as powerful as expected and spread radioactive fallout across a much wider area than they'd planned. Nearby islanders weren't given proper warning and were exposed to high levels of radiation. Some were relocated, but the long-term effects were pretty bad, mainly increased cancer rates and, again, birth defects. To this day, the area is uninhabitable. Some former residents have been allowed some short visits, but nobody actually lives here full time. Oddly though, they tried to promote Bikini as a great place to dive. To be fair, the lagoon is filled with shipwrecks from World War II, but that's because it was a fleet used as nuclear target practice. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this would be the first place on my list of diving destinations. This is Lop Nur in Xinjiang, China. It's a dried up lake bed also known as the Sea of Death. For decades, this was China's main nuclear testing site. Starting in the 60s all the way up to 1996, they ran 45 nuclear tests out here. They dropped explosives from planes, they did underground detonations, and blew up hydrogen bombs. It's super remote, which made it ideal for military use, but that didn't mean people weren't being affected. Some of the blasts released huge clouds of radioactive dust, and to this day, no one really knows the full impact on people or the environment. After the last test in 1996, the site went quiet, until recently, in late 2023, satellite images showed some new construction popping up. Roads, fences, some buildings, something China's getting ready to start testing again, which the government has, of course, denied. With all that said, I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.